We live in very challenging times. Our generation alive today is beset on all sides by a variety of socio-political problems, environmental challenges, and economic issues that put our prosperity, and in fact even our continued survival in certain doubt. Even recently the world was rocked with the events of the terrorist attacks in France, Nigeria, but let's not forget our brothers and sisters in Pakistan. Places worlds apart, but united in the same common human struggle. So you might be wondering, ladies and gentlemen, why we should bother with equipping ourselves with an outwards looking perspective of exploring new frontiers when we still have a wealth of problems to solve down here. Should we try to solve those problems first or are they in fact a reason to inspire our search for a better tomorrow. Now, if you study human history, it's always been the exploratory nature of human beings that has helped us to overcome the various challenges of that age and usher in and subsequently usher in the next golden age. There's a saying that goes that necessity is the mother of invention, but I would like to say that ultimately curiosity is the mother of progress. The age of exploration and discovery, also known as the age of sail, from the 15th to the 17th centuries, brought us out of the medieval dark ages and to the light of the age of the Renaissance and the Enlightenment. You don't even have to look that far back to see a connection. The race to space from the 1950s laid down many of the foundations for the technologies that we have today in the information age. So you could say, as far-fetched as it may sound, that the space shuttle helped to invent the iPhone. Of course, there was a lot of overbearing capitalism as well as bitter tension and rivalries in between. And there are still many of us humans on Earth that have yet to fully experience the benefits of the globalized world environment that we live in today. We still have much to learn. But the steps forward that we have made so far are owed to a curious few that chase the unknown with the desire to at least escape to or discover something new. Now, I'm a scientist, but being a scientist is a very broad term. It, it doesn't mean that you're this uh, mad hat, socially awkward person that likes to wear a white lab coat. We are simply a very inspired group of people that are endlessly captivated with finding out as much as we can about the world that we live in. And nothing tickles our fancy more than the investigation of the unknown frontiers of human knowledge. So you could say that we scientists are all explorers at heart. Hello. Beep. So ever since I could remember, I've had a deep passion for astronomy and astrophysics. It was a love affair motivated by a feeling that I could scarcely articulate nor understand. It just simply felt right. It all started when I was a child, actually. I figured that we're all naturally born scientists and explorers when we were all children. At youth, we were all equally curious and intrigued with finding out as much as we can about this big, wide, open world that we live in. As a child, I also watched a lot of science fiction. Any fans of Star Wars in the house? Woo! Woo! Yeah. Okay. Can't wait for the episode seven, right? Yeah. 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 Any fans of Star Trek? Yeah. Yeah. Live long and prosper? <laughs> you guys can fight now. It's actually a geek thing. But science fiction has always been heavy on the theme of space exploration. Sci-fi is filled with stories of countless perilous journeys to the stars, and I'd like to share with you today a perilous journey to that frontier, the, the unknown frontier that I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, and perhaps give you a glimpse of that passion that I hold so dearly, the experience of exploring the universe. So we'll start exactly where we are right now, right here, 